Welcome to our third recap video of the Wild Cards campaign before we started streaming. I'm Scott. I play Valentine on the Wild Cards. Pass it over to the DM. Well, I am the DM to the Wild Cards. And we're so delighted to have uh, Chaos himself, Honda the Blue, join us, Kevin Kranja. Kev, how you doing? Hello. I'll probably bring more chaos to this video, but <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so we just went through, you can watch these videos. They're linked down below a recap one and a recap two. Uh, we're not even going to get into it, but basically our campaign, we played almost 56 episodes, um, before the actual stream starts. So we're just running through these and now we're going through, let me pull it up sessions 38 to 58, uh, where we left, left off after this whole Verdancia Shadowfell arc before we even get started, uh, Raymond comes in right here, right off the top. And Kev, I just wanted to ask you, why did you hate Raymond right from the start? What, what made you just hate this clear sage wizard uh, right from the start? I think we had some early interactions. Um, you know, at that time, I was asking for a lot of stuff from everyone that we met, especially like the more powerful, magical yeah. people. And I think he sort of gave me like, you know, short, like gave me a little attention, you know, he like just, cast me aside type thing so i'm like okay something's up with this guy yeah anyone who gives you lip you do not do not enjoy their presence in particular i don't know there was just the feeling i had from him this is not a spoiler we start our game in knowing that raymond is one of the big bads um so when you're watching this if you are watching these before you watch our pre-stream and uh, nothing spoiled but raymond is a big bad we actually find that out in these sessions we'll get to that shortly um but kyle when you were when you were building that raymond here did you always know you wanted to have this twist in him uh yeah raymond was always going to be uh, a dark horse of like it was gonna it was gonna be a, a figure that i was gonna pick a great moment to turn uh and i always just kind of liked him as this character and it just worked out so well that i was like yeah i think that'll work out pretty well he's a he's gonna be an ally and i'll just kind of slowly corrupt and turn but the fact that hondo was so antagonistic with him and the rest of you were like no nah, he's totally cool Man, he's great <laughs> solidified that like a hundred percent i'm gonna make this guy big bad <laughs> So we would play our pre-stream games at uh, Kyle and Leah's house, and it was a bit of a, a bit of a drive um, just for it was usually like me, Brock, Ali, Kev, Val, Brawley, Gord, Hondo. But we would joke in the car, uh, Kev, what if you're right? What if Han what if Raymond is bad? <laughs> and we all laughed at how like ridiculous that sounded. Anyways, guys, let's get to it. This is our final recap. We start out Raymond teleporting to Verdancia. He's bringing along me of year our beloved like fifth member of the party, um, asking us to track down some gate gems. Do you want to just fill us in here on um, what this whole setup was, Kyle? Yeah, quick, quick minor recap. So you guys had uh, encountered a gate gem with Sira, the Witch Queen in Rogue Point. Uh, and as part of this inter initial interaction with Raymond, basically traded him that for some of the, some items. Uh, and he was kind of like, I don't know exactly what this is, but I'll, I'll do my best to kind of research it and figure it out. Um, so after your adventure, Enters with in, in the Shadowfell, returning with Lily's soul and having some downtime in Verdantia. Uh, I was kind of introducing a new hook to kind of get you guys moving on to the next piece. And uh, Leah made a good point that, like at the time, like while we were talking about writing out some of these some of these points. At the time, she immediately was like super suspicious as soon as he came back. And it was like, obviously, Honda was suspicious. Everyone yeah. else was like, oh, great, Raymond's here. Yeah. But like when I started like explaining, because Raymond was being kind of cagey about the gate gems and being yes. very vague with like, I don't know what they can do, but I want to know more. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly where they are, but I, I, if you guys can get me more, I need more. It was kind of this almost... I was trying to tease in a little bit of obsession, a little bit of um, a little bit of need. Uh, and Mary, Mary slash Leah, I mean, it was like, mm -mm, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so she sends a message off to Alexander, kind of warn him like, hey, Raymond's being kind of sketch. Um, I think we even keep here. I remember Mary having this, and I think we even keep one of the gate gems um, from, I think the one, was it the Shadowfell one? one? Yeah. yeah. And we kind of kept it to ourselves. So we didn't, we were felt a little weary. So we didn't tell Raymond we had that. Exactly. Um, but, and that was a, that was a tense moment. Uh, not tense moment. That's the wrong way to put it. But it was an interesting moment from like DM 
to player versus like you guys versus your players because in in world i wasn't 100 percent convinced that you guys had good enough reason to be super suspicious but it 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 did work out totally that it like you guys you guys justified your actions mm-hmm. and that was a good moment of like us like kind of learning off of one another um and it was ultimately a very good call for you guys to hold on to that um I thought he so, was going to do something with the gate gems. Like I, I yeah. that's when I really started. Like when he wanted them, and he's like, "Hey, you know, you should go and get them." I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, what is this guy? What's he going to do with these things? Why should we give them to him?" So not only like, so I, I was kind of putting that down as little breadcrumbs for you guys to yep. kind of like spot these in the world, and to, it was a bit of world building of like these things are very powerful. They're across the across the entire world. They have weird old magic connected to them, but. <laughs> the the funny part that I kept coming back to was like, <clears throat> you guys got real cagey about it. You kept the one. I was like, cool. They're gonna do something with it. <laughs> Motherfuckers didn't touch it. You didn't touch no. it forever. We were terrified of it. We were terrified. <laughs> and so starts a trend of being terrified of things Kyle gives us. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, in this moment, uh, we, we get a gate jam compass from Raymond. He kind of gives us this task just to clear up a couple of loose things here. We have another good breadcrumb, and I love. A dream sequence um, that the DM gives a player. We have a whole, uh, we'll link it below, a whole thing on DMs uh, communicating things through visions and dreams. And you did two particular ones here, and this is our first state of it. This one impacts Gord. Could you tell us a little bit about that and what you were sending him from Orcus? So Gord's pact with Orcus was still relatively fresh and relatively undefined. Not much had really changed. There was little hints and bits and bobs through the Arendelle arc. And then into the Shadowfell, admittedly, he had some minor moments where Orcus was like, you guys ended up at a Raven Queen temple and they they butt heads. Um, so there was some like fuckery there. But for the most <laughs> part, that was a Valentine arc. So I didn't want to interject too many other things. It was kind of a group thing, but it was Valentine's kind of spotlight. So I kind of pulled back until the, the very end with Gord. Um, so this was a moment where I could kind of, I was dropping a breadcrumb with the gate gems, but you didn't really bite into that too deeply. And it wasn't really, I, I was intentionally vague with it. It wasn't really a, here's a thing, go here. Yeah, it was yeah. a, here's a maybe go investigate somewhere. So I needed something a little bit more concrete. So I had this vision slash dream sequence where uh, Gord and Orcus interacted. um, And it was very much the first proper introduction to like Orcus, the Orcus, this big monstrous motherfucker sitting on a throne of bone, chomping on dead bodies. (laughs) Uh, And kind of saying like, look, I've given you some power. You've done well. Now I need you to do something for me. I need you to go and get this item that will make you even more powerful. It's called the Black Staff. It's in a temple beneath, uh, outside the city Durnhold on the eastern, uh, western shores through the Kel. Uh, go there, find the temple, you'll make your way through, retrieve the Black Staff for me, and it will bring you more power. And if you do it for me, you know, we're, we're sharing more this people. warlock patron business here. Um, so that was kind of the hook of like basically an item of power to draw Gord's eye to hopefully draw the rest of you like, okay, sure, let's go this way. Meanwhile, the rest of the party had their eyes on something else. And that was uh, Kyle introducing an adorable, like monster baby animal sanctuary <laughs> in Verdancia. <laughs> Kevin hates this shit. Uh, <laughs> I love this shit. Uh, clearly Brawley did. And then Aaliyah had to like marry be kind of like it though Leah loved it. Anyways, long story short, we adopt three baby owlbears. Uh, we only have one left. Our yeah. sweet boy Ted. Our sweet boy Ted. Kev, how much does Hondo love our owl bears? Oh, I think there must have been two or three times along the way that I was like, let's just dump these bears somewhere. Let's <laughs> let's sacrifice them. Eat you know, them. Yeah. Well, we encounter yeah. a few enemies. I think where I'm like, let's let's off let's give them as a decoy <laughs> or something. Uh, oh God. They just got us well, in more trouble. Yeah. I yeah. Know. It wasn't great. They still got one. Um, so then we decide, we realize uh, we have to travel through the Kel, which is this big desert in the middle of the continent. Um, and just like Kev, on a whim, you were like, I'll, I'll hire a guide. And you just went out and chose someone and named them Lando. I, I like, that was you naming them, I'm pretty sure. Um, that is, I want to interject real quick here because <laughs> 
Kev didn't give anyone a moment to breathe from the moment he said, I'll get a guide to the moment where he said, I go to a bar, I hire a guy, I give him this much gold, he'll take us there. And he like laid out the information. I was like, okay. Yeah, you know what? Like that makes sense. There would be guides to go through the Cal. You guys are in Verdantia. You're in like the biggest hub near like the, the, the Cal. There would be people who would nomadic people travel through. There'd be people who would guide people who are unfamiliar that a hundred percent totally makes sense. So with like this inspiration, I was like, you can name the guy, you know, I'll, I'll figure out who he is. And he was not powerful. He was a level two ranger with like specialization in desert travel, but like he wasn't a particularly strong character to like your guys, like eighth level, ninth level. Almost business. starting to get godly powers. Yeah. yeah, like You're getting crazy up there. There's level two rangers, you know, strolling with you. Uh, but yeah, I gave Hon uh, Hondo slash Kevin the the full run of what became Lando. How did you feel about Lando's service? Do you feel like he's a good guy, Kev? He's a good guy. He's, he's a great guy. He landed <laughs> where we needed to. You know, he got into... I think I I don't know. I think we did have a few fights. I'm not sure how much he partaked. You were, you were tough fights. on him. You were tough on him. You just but, wanted him to be strong. And I kept, I wanted to keep his services long term, right? I, kept, I offered him more. He, he wouldn't budge. No, so what happens, yeah, is you guys, you do hire Lando, you pay him very can I, well. Can I ask one question before? So First. I know Gord had his Gord had his vision to he wanted to go to Durnhold, but why did we want to go to Durnhold? Because I, I see that's in our notes. Was it, did Gord mention it and we thought we should go there? Or was that like a hint from Raymond to start heading that direction? So there there was a word of a gate gem south of Durnhold at, uh, along the it. Kadar shore, if I'm not mistaken, um, where you did hear ultimately a group had of Raymond's group had gone there and ultimately there was going to be another Gambino situation because Gambino showed up there to take that gate gem right that you guys just kind of heard about way 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 later it was just another thing where I was like yeah if they go that way I'll throw Gambino at him again um but yeah as Leah mentions are producing the background as players too we we saw that DM is putting a little breadcrumb for Gord, so we want to help out as players get to another cool PC like possible backstory thing. So we were all on board to go in that direction. Anyways. But one thing, I, I just from like a DM side that I always think is important, uh, or if you can kind of line it up, if you have an individual goal for a certain character and you have a secondary party goal, if you can have those align ever uh -huh. so slightly, it just makes everything easier. Like yeah. you can kind of transition from one to the other. You can throw everything in the way. You can throw complications in the way. And I certainly fucking did. I threw you guys <laughs> way off course, like moments later, but it pulled you all in the same direction and you all felt good about it from what I understood. Yeah. So sorry, I interrupted you though. We start heading out and you're explaining, Lando's doing a great job guiding us <clears> and he gets us to a place called the Firefly. Yeah, uh, I remember this fight. Firefly. Yeah, the founder of the Firefly. I remember this fight well because Kev, your old pal Malgrim, the Hobgoblin, shows up. So in our first recap video, we talked about you burst in this room filled with goblins. We get in a scrap. You cut this man's face off. You think you murder him, and he shows back up from hell with some revenant Val cultists, and he is pissed. Mm -hmm. Do you remember seeing this guy? Do you remember this fight? It, 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 first of all, it did not work. <laughs> Cutting the face did not work. The disguise, it, yeah, it did not. <laughs> Not that good. You scared the shit out of some goblins, though. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you did. I remember this fight going down in a bar, and we were not mm. prepared for it because that guy was like disguised and then revealed himself as a nice, like, cliffhanger moment at the time. And so we had this, like, scrap, like, kind of outside the bar, kind of inside the bar. I'll say this what I remember most about this fight is after we do survive, um, we're like, oh shit, what about the owl bears? <laughs> and I rush to the owl bears. What's happened to them? And then there, cradling the owl, owl bears from harm is Lando. And that's when I knew this fucking guy is a lifer with the wild card. So I will, I will go to bat for this guy for now and always. Yep. It, was a, it was a nice convenient way to tuck everyone off to the side for me. I think I was nearly dead or I think I may have actually died. Gone down? Gone I don't down. think you died, but you but made it was, very I well took a big hit. Oh yeah. I think, I think he was, was going the first person to get attacked. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he definitely didn't remember you cutting his face off because he was dead at the time. But coming back, so this was this is one of the first times that you guys actually kind of got the the proper introduction of what the revenant vow really stood for. Like the term revenant 
like meaning to come back from the grave. Um, and this was that first, this was one of the first times where I really pulled someone back who you thought was gone. Yeah. And that became kind of a, a series of moments happening where like higher level members of Revenant Vow would become like revenants yeah. um, in service of the nine, in service of Asmodeus. And, you know, can't continue to do it in perpetuity. But so Malgram has essentially been uh, taken off the board now as you've killed him twice. But it was that first kind of introduction of like, these guys can come back too. We had another cool moment here where so after the fight, or maybe even just before, there's this like seer character, this old wiser character. And Alana talked to him and then he basically gave her a vision. Um, we can say who this person is now or we can re reveal it later, but this- No, we hold this, on to that. <laughs> okay, good. This wise old NPC gave Alana this vision of the abyss, almost similar to Gord's in the quest for the black staff, but almost like from a polar opposite alignment standpoint. Exactly. It was honestly, actually, it was the exact script. I used the exact vision, but I just, I just gave different points of context yeah uh, and I, I flavored it differently where one it's a search for power it's a it's a desire it's a need to serve the other it's a it's a search for um an answer a solution something to stop something bad from happening uh, because ultimately what i did with Allie's was i kind of showed the eventuality of what would happen and what did come to pass ultimately should the black staff fall into the wrong hands. And I showed little bits and pieces of the blood raining down and I showed uh, a city falling and I showed people lying in the streets. Um, a little bit more flavor onto the end of this vision where Gord really just got pictures of Get what this. he needed to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh -huh. yeah, it was, it, the seer was uh, an interesting character that you guys all like tried to like learn everything you could about in such a small <laughs> yeah. time. Uh, but I decided, yeah, like I threw the combat in the middle of it and then he came back, gave this vision to Ali and then he just kind of <laughs> faded away. Leah, our producer again, uh, coming in clutch with these notes. Do you remember, she's hinting at Hondo, do you remember you might've asked the seer something maybe about like, will one of us betray us? Or did you, do you remember asking the seer a question? I vaguely remember that, but I think there were, I can't remember why, but there was, I think there was a little tension between me and Gord at the time. I don't know if it started when he attacked um, the orc lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nearly got it killed and us into a mega, mega brawl, but I think there was some, and then I also did some reckless stuff, so there, <laughs> there was maybe some tension on that, and so I think I did ask something like that. Will one of them betray us? Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a little rupture, some tension between the pirate twins, but that's all good. Um, so now we have two kind of like quests, not that we're aware of it, towards this black stuff. Also some hints of like um, dwarven heroes who fell in the quest to defend this black staff um, from the clutches of darkness. But we, we get this advice to head to the Titan's throne um, in the middle of this desert, this like badass monument. I'm just gonna go through it here quick. Uh, we try and go here, there's some null attacks, there's a purple worm, we end up like collapsing down a cliff. RIP, two baby owl bears die, but we still keep Ted. Thanks Kyle for at least giving us one <laughs> that's alive. Yeah. Um, but then yeah, we, we end up, Kev, do you remember this? We like come to this temple cavern um, and there was Moloch, who was this like devil sitting there. We ended up throwing down with him. Um, you remember any of this fight? I remember how this fight ends, if you recall. I just want to point out that I think the worm fight, we, <laughs> we, we got screwed because of the owl bears. I think we were attacked while we were climbing a cliff. Yeah. And it, the bears were holding us back because we had to carry these two, three giant bears. And I was like, just, <laughs> just toss them over. <laughs> First off, owl bear, not giant bear. <laughs> or I didn't say toss them over. I think I said offer them to the worm. As, as I think you were trying to feed the worm with them. <laughs> so you guys do you remember? Do you remember getting swallowed by this thing or was that Gord? I can't remember I by this giant worm. <laughs> I remember doing some sort of spell that like actually worked and I felt good about it with this, uh, with this worm. I can't remember which one I used, but I remember being like, oh, that spell's handy. Without learning like what his capabilities are. Um, but then we get to this fight with this devil, straight up 
devil, our first encounter with one. Um, and then we start to throw down with him. We're on the floor of this desert, but as he's getting lower and lower and lower, you, Kyle, make us do a bunch of saves. And I think I'm the only one who rolls high. I think I rolled maybe in the 20s. Yeah, please. So it was it was a little bit of, um, I, I provided a little bit of context. So this devil wasn't just kind of there. This devil is allied yes. with the Revenant Vow. Uh, and essentially, after you guys had battled with this is a this is a day or two after you guys had battled with Nalgrim, so word had kind of returned to the to the vow upper upper level vow people throw tier, and they essentially were saying like, okay, you guys are getting you, you're too much of a nuisance. We're gonna have to send some big guns after these just to just to knock them out of the battle, so we don't have to deal with this bullshit ever again. They just kind of they're getting too much in our business, and they know a little too much now because the part of what Malgrim was there doing was recruiting people to their cause. Mm -hmm. And so you guys had kind of stumbled into a bit of a recruitment um, like spree by the Revenant Vow. And you were getting into an area that at the time you weren't fully aware of what it meant. Mary kind of knew, but so the Titan's throne is a, is a, is a, is a monument, but it's basically a mountain, essentially. It's a mountain range, but the specific point is this Titan's throne. It's kind of like a pride rock kind of, kind of situation. Um, and above Titan's throne, high, high, high up in the mountains, uh, is where the Eldrazi have their main base. Uh, and the Eldrazi had been basically funding and training the Revenant Vow um, recruits. So everyone on the on the ground level and Malgrim was basically recruiting people to bring them up mm. Titan's throne, up through to the Eldrazi. And with you guys being right there and just getting too close and having now been in succession, like fucking with their shit, they're like, <laughs> no, 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 let's send a proper devil to shut them down. So Moloch is is a, a proper devil. Um, and this fight was, this was a fun one for me, and I think a fun one for everybody. Yeah, I it had it. it had it had great kind of. I made a map. There was like bridges and stuff, and mm -hmm. uh, this like this rocky outcropping, uh, and it kind of was connected to this tunnel, very small cave tunnel that you kind of followed in, hearing the sounds of this uh, knolls that you're fighting on the way up, and assuming within this cave was it was another knoll instead it was moloch kind of having killed a bunch of these gnolls inside and he pulled one of the gate gems out of this uh urn that they had this this offering thing that they had and he showcased that like he was pulling out a, a, a gate gem and so it was, it was both there's a gate gem on the field moloch's here showdown fight <laughs> and it was a big one but as as you said you guys won, you were winning the battle. Action economy was 100% in your favor. He was super powerful and it was a good fight. Uh, you guys all kind of were getting down, all collectively were getting low on health. So as a last ditch, last ditch effort, Moloch used uh, a plane shift ability, but he used it through the gate gem. And what that kind of did was showcase one of the things that the gate gems could do in theory and it amplified the spell and it became kind of a radial massive plane shift it, it expanded the spell instead of a single target it became a big group a forced check so everyone including moloch was plane shifted and well, they failed the save to be plane shifted <laughs> except valentine who succeeded because it's a charisma save and uh, you're pretty good at that uh very cool though because there's a swirl, swirl, swirl. Um, you DM'd it perfectly. You described it perfectly, where all the, the sand and dust settles, and Val's just like standing there. It was like me and Fern, and we were just like, uh, guys. And then you did a completely separate thing where I think you described, I think I left, and you described to them, I went on your beautiful porch and just hung out, and then I, you described to them where they were, uh, which was like, well, we'll get into that. It's like, it's hell. You guys are in hell. But then when you, yeah. you came to me, we just had a cool, fun vision of, um, I think I just ended up, you asked me like, so what do you do? And I just said like, I think I wait. I'll wait like several hours. And you're like, all right, hours are going by. They're not showing up. And then I think in the middle of the night, I just took out Heartbreaker and said like, I think I'll pray to whoever is granting me these powers. And then 
had the commune with the summer queen. I like, I had a vision in this garden, this like beautiful spring place. And then literally saw my patron, Titania, the summer queen, who just said, as a service member of her court, working towards being a Lord of the Light, um, you, you've earned this. And then Heartbreaker got a plane shift ability. It was, so it was I, actually the, it was, it, it was that, but like, it was essentially like a solidification of your pact because we kind of left it a little open-ended. Mm -hmm. This was a like, if you agree properly to become a Lord of Light, to work for me at, in my service of the court of the Summer Fae, then I will give this to you. And you were like a hundred percent. I'm in all the way. Yeah, I need to go to my friends. And so you got the you got the plane shift ability of Heartbreaker, which at the time was tied to once a full once a full moon or once yep. the once lunar cycle. Moon. So I, I Heartbreaker had this little like moon dial that would show when when the moon was full, you could reactivate it. So it was kind of like because you guys were not quite the level of having plane shift abilities up yet. Uh, so I was like, I'm going to give it to you for sure, but I'm going to put a pretty big like kind of stopgap on it. Also a great way to be like, you can't just bamf now out of hell. Like, exactly. okay, you can get there, but you guys are stuck. Speaking of hell, uh, Hondo, so starts our quest in the, the outer planes of hell and the abyss. Um, I'm just looking at the notes here. I'm like, where do I even fucking begin with this shit? Uh, <laughs> we saw what tormented you... devils, I think. There were like flaming trenches, I think we saw. Yep. A complete yep. wasteland. Yep. <laughs> All the highlights. <laughs> So we start out, let me get this right. We start out traveling across Avernus to Ribcage. Um, Kyle, you just you just walk us through this stuff because yeah. most of it is um, blocked out in my mind from... Uh, so from there were plenty of, plenty of fun encounters, plenty of... I, I, this was around the time that Baldur's Gate descended to Avernus. The book had come out. So I was pulling a lot of inspiration from that because I, I, I find that book is one of one of the most interesting, most uh, adventures put out by Wizards most recently. Um, though now having playing through it and, and read through it properly, it some of the pacing is off. It's a whole different topic. Um, but yeah, so you are in Avernus and you're in the war-torn waste. You can see the blood wars happening. You can see the the river of blood, the river sticks, and you can see these like machines, like these like Mad Max style machines are running across uh, the plains. And so we had you guys, I had you guys fighting on those. We fought against just some standard devils. You guys were running across. And I think in, uh, in another vision slash meeting with the worm uh the yes. lord caius showed up to to gourd uh on a watch and because you guys were not exactly sure where you should go you were just kind of going to try and just keep moving so you weren't a target by these devils uh and he said go to rib cage and he kind of explained to brock and ultimately to you guys that rib cage is a is a portal city to this, to the the world of Sigil and the and the city of doors and this outer out, um, I forget the actual name for it. It's kind of the Outlands, I think it is. I think that was it, yeah. And each of those has a city connected to each of the outer planes, and it's kind of this hub. If you were to think of it like a like a wheel, it's the hub. And so that was the explanation. You're like, great. So it gave you a direction. <laughs> so you make your way to what Ribcage was, but ribcage rather than being a city have been destroyed by zario and the portal lie now in the hands of a pit fiend named gurex in this kind of underground casino and he kind of like scurried away with it zario not giving a shit focusing on the blood war gurex had kind of begun making a name for himself and like building up this casino uh with fighting pits and all super fun stuff that you guys had to basically work your way through to get access to the portal What's that casino called? Do you remember? Uh, it was. I'll get it from my notes. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. I had a cool, like, infernal name for it. Uh, I think I called it just the Club of the Lost. That was, was it. Club was of the Lost. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The common name for it. This is like an iconic thing in my head. Um, what do you remember about the Club of the Lost, Hondo? There's like a couple things that stand out for me, but what do you remember about going in there? So I remember going in and we meet the hostess <laughs> and... I can't, so I think the hostess was a devil disguised. Yep. And I think I made a wager and 
it was for I think it was I made a wager for entrance. I got I lost <laughs> it and or I was lied to and I lost Oh that's I lost right. our money, right? Or I lost yeah. a good chunk like of immediately. Our money. <laughs> yeah, we had some money and then yeah, like we just used it to get in. Some guards just basically swindled us and we're like, Oh yeah, you have to pay that up. So then we went in and then the hostess was like, you don't have to pay to get in here. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> but then we met these hostess. There was one in particular I remember Val took a liking to who was kind of helping us out. She's kind of flirty, kind of fun. We'll get back to that later. But um, she was kind of looking out for him a bit. Hondo, I remember you gambling. This because it's a straight up casino. I remember mm-hmm. Gord gambling, losing. And he did have, didn't have any money. So he lost his tail in that yeah. game of chance. Yep. Hondo, actually, you were playing very well. I think Kevin just enjoys gambling. Uh, <laughs> but you guys, you were making money. Like, you were actually winning quite a bit. Um, and then I think I think you and Gord were then trying to cheat and, like, just trying yeah. and, and double That's down. <laughs> and I think I don't, I think Gord lost the tail and it, as a result of that. And it was a bunch of stuff. It was It was actually really, really fun. But ultimately, you guys came to find that the only way you could get access to the portal was either a, a, an exorbitant amount of soul coins that you'd have to spend years here trying to win and work your way towards. I honestly, I did actually, you know, this is kind of what happened and what could have happened. Um, the one path was enter into these fighting pits. And as the prize for this tournament, uh, you could get access to the portal. You can make a deal with Gurex. And yeah, it was like audience with Gurex and then maybe, yeah. And yeah, and you could you could move on to, to the Outlands if that's what you wanted, or you could get whatever you wanted with an audience with Gurex. So your guys' plan was to go with a portal and you win some money and all this, and have some fun. The other path, I legitimately was pitching, uh, gonna work my way towards pitching, was like, like Ocean's Eleven heist. Heist? Oh, heist. fuck. I had two big plans, fighting oh, pits man. or heist in, in, in the nine. Uh, it would have gone very badly, but like also Oof. really great. <laughs> you put an end on the heist. It would have gone so bad so quick. What did you say, Hanno? But I, I remember the cheating part. We couldn't, the guards came, yeah. I think I tried or was about to cheat and the guard came like right up to the table. Yeah. And that was like a no. And then I think the guard actually did kill someone who did try cheating oh yeah and that was like a warning like okay play yeah. for once i'll play it by fair <laughs> yeah but it so was i do remember really though fun. yeah it was so fun uh you, we had to pay money to enter this so we needed you to earn us little coin That's but right. we decided to enter this like fighting pit thing um so starts a very very cool like tiny gladiator arc of our uh game where it was literally three rounds, Kyle. I guess three fights. We did. We did uh, a couple of different, a couple of different fights. Essentially, like you had to work your way up into like a title fight. So you had like yes. introductory fight, and you had to like make a name for yourself. We did this over like maybe a month, two months, like in real mm-hmm. life. Like it took a while. In game, I think you were there for a week or so. But that's still a long time. Friends and fiends, we are graced by our insatiable newcomers once more. The Borales group stand before you, prepared to make a stand and show their worth. What say you to that? Yeah, you you kick the shit out of everybody early on, and then you got put into kind of like a head-to-head match against like other figures who were trying to win the same thing, and ultimately uh, won that as well. And then it was kind of like, okay, now these are our champions. Let's put everything we got against them. So, you know, you guys fought at one point, you fought a, a beholder. Uh, that was a really fun one to kind of like drop on you guys because you had no idea it was coming. And I just like start describing a beholder rising from the floor in this like cage match. And the cage too was like electrified and the crowds around. Like, wow. uh, it was really fun. Uh, we have bad I, experiences with beholders, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. But I will won. say, uh, we changed our name. We didn't. We decided to try and use aliases here very poorly because we'd still call each other by our names accidentally. Yeah. I think we even tried to come up with a new name. We weren't the wild cards. We were someone else. But Hondo, you were Roymond Morales, I believe, was like your right. your yeah. code name. This is interesting because you changed your voice here. You used mm-hmm. to be like a Cockney British. Um, sounding like that was your voice for Hondo. And then you kind of changed to your like present day Hondo like this more like um, tighter in the throat. And then you just mm-hmm. stuck with that. You seemed to like really in- enjoy it. So you just kept it going. Um, yeah, yeah that, that, so that's so cool. I just, I really loved that 
you came out swinging with voices and we were able to commit to it um, so much. But then the final fight I remember was dun, 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 a bell rug. Uh, yeah. And I just remember you describing that and I think maybe ending a game on that and just being like, oh, fuck, here we go. That was a big one. You guys fought against uh, a Baylor, this like this this chained um, demon, uh, and it was a big battle. And you guys pulled out all the stops. I think people went down. I'm pretty sure Hondo and oh, Gord yeah. both went down. Uh, you guys still had Nevir though, so yes. Nevir was able to bring you guys back. Um, but this was also the moment where, that well, throughout the the championship, I should remind that Hondo had been consistently shitting on the ground and throwing it into the crowd and throwing it into the faces of your opponents. Uh, and It was a real like trophy moment for you. And the crowd loved it though, because Kyle would make you roll like a performance check and you were crushing them and the yeah. crowd was on your side. Because they weren't on our side when, when, when you won, right? We won and they were like, huh, who cares? Who are these guys? Yeah. But then yeah. you got them on our side, screaming, I think, oink, oink at the crowd too a lot. That was good. That was a big part of it actually, uh, was was winning the crowd. Winning the crowd mm -hmm. made things change, made things more, it made it, the battles harder, but it made you guys win more overall. And it kind of swayed the opinion of, of the people around Gurix and Gurix ultimately as well. So you guys, you guys killed it. You won against the Baylor. Uh, although Valentine, you did throw Atlanta into the electric fence. So that was a whole thing. I, I had read just the fastball special and I was like, I would love to try this in D&D. &D, yeah. So I, um, polymorphed myself into a giant ape, picked Brawly up. We like action economy did of like, you hold your action, I'll pick you up, I'll throw you. And then I just nat one and just smash her into the, the gate. <laughs> just so sad, just so sad. It was really um, funny though. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> but we do manage to win here. And then yeah. we get whisked away to talk to Gurex. And oh boy, so starts some even more intense stuff. It, it was all very like, intentionally like threatening and intentionally heavy um you're dealing with a proper pit fiend and one who like has some of your fate in his hands and that was big but you did win so like i was still going to reward you so like you still were going to get something of what you wanted but ultimately it can never be super easy you're dealing with devils he wants something more he's not just going to hand you on a silver platter whatever you want so grix drops that Mullah could also pass through here, not far uh, ahead of you. And that he was uh, like, with some like RP, we f he figured out he was headed to the abyss. So that gave you your next point to go to. Um, and he also kind of dropped that like, the Revenant Vow and uh, Moloch basically, or uh, yeah, Moloch had, had basically approached Gurix and been like, yo, we're doing this. It kind of goes against Asmodeus. If you want in, you can get in. Moloch or uh, Gurix was like, yeah, for sure. But then <laughs> obviously when you guys showed up, he's like, let's play the both fields. Let's see what, what we got. So he said, essentially, if you guys can get me information that I can take to Zario, which would one, you know, kind of boost his status in, in Avernus uh, and boost his status with Zario and Asmodeus, uh, that's all devils are looking for is promotion. So he basically said to you, get me information, get me evidence, uh, and I'll, uh, you, know, you can go through here. And, and we have this kind of signed deal with a timeline that you return to me with some evidence. And then Hondo decided to just sweeten that pot as he always does. Uh, because- Hondo, what do you remember about this? What do you what remember did... about your deal here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking this guy, you know, this all powerful devil. Yep. He's gotta have some, something to offer us you know like this we got to make the deal sweet and sweeter here mm -hmm. and so i said hey you know what what like i've not done before what do you got to offer you know what yeah. weapons you got i want to get a weapon yeah and i i also i i think i just straight up asked you like what do you want because, yeah you did like, <laughs> like I'll, I'm, I, I'm okay to do this like <laughs> let's do it if you want to if you want to throw down and essentially the, the deal was like to sweeten the pot uh more, th more than just signing this deal, I want you to sign over part of your soul as like collateral. And so you did it, Valentine got hooked into it, and so did Gord. The three of you signed over parts of your soul to this deal on a timeline to retrieve evidence that you didn't know exactly what you were gonna do with. Uh, and, but you got what uh, came to be your gambler's blade. 
you should note that I think I volunteered their souls. They yeah, didn't. absolutely did. <laughs> well, so Gord, I think you volunteered Gord, and Gord's like, yeah, whatever, like, I don't care. And yeah. then I remember we're facing down a devil too, who's like, I could just murder you or take away this other deal. And I remember Val or me as Val, like looking at Mary and Brawley and being like, I can't let them give their souls like up for this shit. So I guess I'll just do it. What I will say quickly about this moment that was super cool is you described this like beautiful, your classic like casino boss, um, pit boss like room. And he's there, he's reclined against his desk, but you have this like shimmering portal. Um, just kind of near his desk and the whole time i'm like fuck what if we just like make a break for it like what if we just like try and run through it mary you're laughing because i don't know if i tried to do it but kyle very quickly went oh i did <laughs> mary's saying yes kyle do you remember if i did but basically did. kyle you, it was a plant and you were just like that's nothing it doesn't do anything it's just it an, was illusion. an illusion yeah yeah the real portals right down here through this um but yeah i was just like fuck i can't believe like God, just got fell for it so hard it was also in this moment it was yeah uh, speaking of bait and switches also in this moment this this like kind of like impish um devil that val's like kind of catching feelings for uh who's been like very coquettish and she's like the hostess they first met reveals himself like hondo said she's actually like uh, a grotesque like devil man very like um yeah just hideous to behold and was like hey sweetie and uh it was just val was like like fuck this and so goes yeah val got catfish so mary said um and so starts a whole just like string of um val choosing poorly his romance never had luck never had good luck no No, your luck turned real harsh uh (laughs) real quickly it's like you had a lot of good a lot of things go well for you like in an arc previous so like everything had to catch up and kick you in the ass on the way out i loved it this this soul thing is something val will never forget or forgive hondo for (laughs) um but we we go through this portal and we end up out in the outlands like i was describing earlier and then we get like another quest to if we want to use the next portal here um we meet this like adorable uh humanoid otter who's like uh oh i hate this one woman in town and she has this like magic shop and she has a crystal ball and if you were to like get that crystal ball from me i i could figure out how to like teleport you to like uh, the abyssal city of plague mort um which starts a super cool like two two-hander one Val takes out this woman on a nice date in town because they kind of feels like they got some chemistry going, got some rhythm. So he takes her out. So you're we're cutting between them at dinner, real nice casual conversation, and the rest of the party. Hondo, you're taking the lead here, breaking into this woman's home. Hondo, do you remember this? <laughs> you, I, no, I, 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 I don't remember this. This was, you, so you, Mary, and Gord were in the process of breaking into this yep. person's home while Allie was kind of posted up on a corner, right. like classically, like with a, with a newspaper, like being the lookout. And you guys were all using the earrings and basically earring to earring because it was like Jamie. a range yeah. thing uh, <laughs> to, to keep Val in the loop uh, while he's on his date. And then Allie's the go between, and then three of you are in the house. Uh, and there was just some some shit in the house, and you guys had no idea what you were doing. Mary was like trying to like make a plan, and you and Gore were like, "Let's just fucking get door in." Uh, and it was just all over the goddamn place. You ultimately, I think, did get in. I don't remember. You must have got the thing because you did end up making the deal with. Um, I know exactly what happens. Can I describe it? Yes, please. I, I don't remember exactly. So in this house, you do manage to stealth in. You're being sneaky, but then you're like finding creepier and creepier ass shit in here That's like right. a monstrosity like in a room like some sort of like guard creature. yeah that you're like holy shit the fuck is that um there's all sorts of traps and stuff and we keep cutting back to the dinner and then finally the the and val and this this woman are, are like having a really nice time but finally she just says something like um i never thought i'd meet another hat fag and it was like immediately like <laughs> the whole like night changes and Val's like what do you mean and she reveals oh I'm a straight up hag and like we know about your family um, and it's interesting like part of me thinks I should kill you for killing your father but you're kind of like entertaining me uh, yeah and I think this becomes the uh, source of our code word which is disco which if any of us ever said disco in a conversation it was like get the fuck out it's time to panic 
Panic at the Disco. Um, but we pull it off, whether she knew about something going on at home or whether we were able to sneak it. We steal this crystal ball, rush to this otter. Honey, oh, you remember this otter? What were your thoughts on the otter? Did you, did you dig him? Did you jive him? I like the otter. <laughs> I think my first thoughts initially out of game were like, this is like a South Park thing. There was an episode with otters. Oh, really? And then I'm, well, I'm, I was sort of like, bewildered like this is is like a creature of the ocean i don't meet too many creatures of the ocean (laughs) and i think she liked me oh yeah right and probably with val's Val's like she probably did fall for you um yeah you had a really good voice for this guy by the way kyle your your otter voice is great here i can't remember what it was it was kind of a little look little voice like this it was something to this effect it was delightful, uh, but we give him this crystal ball. He's like so pleased, and then we pop in this portal, and whoosh, we end up in Plague Mort. Yeah, uh, which sucks. <laughs> which sucks. Plague Mort starts a whole. Uh, we have another vision here of Gord uh, having a vision of the Black Staff and a dark omen from the stars. It becomes um, to is it just sort of cut in, but yeah, uh, I wanted to start to like kind of ratchet up that like timeline of like you guys gotta get mm-hmm. a move on gord's getting a kind of kick in the ass from from orcus like get your fucking feet in gear what are you doing you've been dicking around fighting and fighting pits and doing all this stuff obviously as the dm like i i made you do all that but <laughs> like orcus in world would be like yo fucking move it along i want this Let's thing pick this shit up like i'm not patient here um so it was it was just trying to like add that that time sensitive pressure that that tension um so you guys did breeze through plague more very quickly there was a uh, a portal obviously again and it was uh At behind this this top of this tower and this is total douchebag in charge uh and he basically sets these like riddles for you to like try and solve and he's being all smarmy about i fucking it. loved this it was so fun and they were <laughs> like they were admittedly like they weren't incredibly difficult riddles but that the whole point was he's like so, so he's like i'm so smart you'll never get these and like before i finish saying most of them kevin and leah were just shouting the answers in my face yeah. oh it's this it's this yeah. <laughs> And it was really fun to just like play this just like pouty little bitch of just like fuck you guys. Uh, because you we went started through... to like throw down. I don't even remember. <laughs> you went through all of them. You're like, oh, what about this? Uh, it has a face. And then you're like, oh, it's a clock. And then it was like, oh. and then he asked another one, and he's so sure. And then by the third one, he was like, you know what? Fuck it. We're fighting. I don't care anymore. We're fighting. <laughs> we're not going to do this. Yeah. Um, I will say, Mary received a message from Alexander here. It was like one of these mm. messages, almost like he's trying to send a message, and then it was like what are you doing here what's going on and then it basically cuts off very suspicious and worrisome um we, yeah we, we 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 fuck around with this guy at the top of his portal tower but we managed to escape um just a delightful encounter though kyle where you subverted our expectations of something very <laughs> difficult to be something else this is also um, just a key point just from another like dm tip while we're, while we're doing these like little recaps it's really smart to like have like super tense like scary heavy yeah. shit just throw in a little levity little levity <laughs> little little like little wizards playful. who are who are made of uh, otters little like kind of like fun heist there's no real stakes here little little dinners with hags and then total douchebags and then i knew i needed like there was like a significant amount of levity because then we get into the abyss and it was not going to be light it was all very dark. It was all going to be brutal, and I knew that. And we spent, from this moment, going through the portal, we drop into uh, the ocean, like, like tumultuous seas of the gaping maw, the lair of the Demogorgon in the abyss. From that moment, in real life, we spent a whole year playing <laughs> this game before we got out of the abyss. It was intense. So we have to traverse these seas of the gaping mud, which is no small feat. We managed to like wind up on this like jungle shore. We start walking through these trees and it's a dense ass jungle. And Kyle, you did such cool things of setting this place up because we kept like wandering off. And then you did personalized visions with each of us that kind of like preying on our character's fears. Hondo, you were failing saves here. Um, Do you remember what your consequence was in this jungle here? Well, I mean, I remember I remember having bad visions and then I think there was a fog 
And next thing I knew, I was going crazy and chewing my fingers <laughs> off. Like that's it was right. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. There was you were you were a tough one. So we I we did do a video on on visions and, and dreams and and toying with your players with this. Uh, and I'm sure Scott will have that linked below. Uh, but just for a moment, you were one of the most difficult ones to write a vision for. I had a perfect one for Val to play on this like idea of being the face and wearing and putting on a mask of who you really are and really just fucking with his head. Um, yeah. Mary and Allie had guilt for days to uh -huh. just pull at. You're scared. You're scared. And you chop through one last time, getting close to this figure, you see a Goliath figure ahead of you. Half his face decaying away. One eye gone from its socket, sallow, sunken, the muscles that you've seen. I don't, I just, I couldn't come up with like a really good one of like, you didn't, you don't have guilt for most things. You didn't have like, you didn't have anything that you were really worried about. You were just kind of like happy go lucky and just like doing I think it thing. was maybe coward. Like it was playing on his bravado. Exactly. So that was, that was where I ultimately came to find like, yeah, you, you have such pride in yourself mm -hmm. that that's where I have to pull and, and stab and the visions were different, but then you also were rolling really badly and you got a couple of extra things out, outside the visions that included uh, something to the effect, like it was like a madness effect all around. Yes. And yeah, you had to chew off one of your own fingers, which was very fun. You described it really well because you were like, uh, oh, you, you find like a delicious snack, whatever. You, you're so relieved and you're so hungry. So you just eat and it's so wonderful. And then you basically shifted focus to the party. We find him. Honda's backs to us. He turns around. And he's just nibbled off like the top of his finger. And we're yeah. like, what the fuck, Honda? Wake up. Uh, we end up, I think, roping us all together here, trying to stay focused, trying to go through. And then uh, we end up on this like... Uh, how would you describe it? It's like we see this like temple and the tree line breaks and then so it's, I, yeah. It's like heavy jungle for the majority of this travel. And you guys were traveling for hours. Um, and then, yeah, you see the jungle begin to kind of disperse and break and through it, you can see a structure. But more importantly, you can see little motes of fire that are casting light on this space that is otherwise torrentially raining and lightning. <laughs> like there's nothing, it sucks. Um, but you can see torches. So you can see there's people, you can see that there's a, there's a building of some kind and it turned out to be this kind of pyramid ziggurat um, place that you, that Ali and Gord had seen in a vision. So it was a, it was a signifier of like, you're, you've made to where you're going. But as you kind of got closer, keeping in the shadows, looking through this thinning jungle, you saw that there were Revenant Val cultists here. And you also saw from a distance, Moloch was here and that he was kind of guarding over this kind of like wall of force, like bubble uh, within which you saw three figures kind of on their knees. And I don't remember if I, I gave it away at the moment who they were, or if I waited until you guys got closer because you guys, you were like taking out people and like trying to get them to answer and they were all being like, fuck you. So you just killed them. Um, uh, I just, I don't remember exactly if you got I close. Caught, I think he caught on and was like, come here. Like, it's fine. Like, come here. And then I think we tried to get close and then saw. And then within this wall of force bubble on their knees and clearly looking beaten, bruised and, and captured, uh, Prince Colton Delarian, uh, Alexander and Raymond Barras. All of our friends, Kev, all our beloved allies and trusted <laughs> NPC player friends. Um, Mary was obviously furious, uh, so pissed. Yeah. These are people from her city, uh, Alexander, obviously clearly someone she's so attached to. Um, so he, Moloch kind of is like, let's have a little chat here. So we walk up and he basically says, we can't go in that temple to Carval, devil demon thing. Why don't you guys do it? You go get that artifact, the black staff, come out, we'll give you the hostages. Uh, Raymond, or sorry, Alexander and Colton, we kind of were able to touch base with and just be like, you all right? And they're just basically like, nah, never been better. But Raymond had this look on his face of like concentration, something 
off and we couldn't communicate with him. And I just remember, Hondo, you were like, fuck this. Like, I don't care about this asshole. Like, you fucking kill him right now. And I remember Val and Kyle, you giving me the option. I was like, why can't he talk? And you were like, I, you were just as Moloch were like, I'll just kill him right now. Like, I don't care. Like, do you want me to just kill him in front of you? That'll make him talk. And it was just so like, oh, there's something off here. You can tell there's something weird, but we don't want to push our luck. So yeah. let's let's not fuck with this. And we agree. We reluctantly agree. You did. You you agreed ultimately. And with it kind of in the back of your minds, like trying to figure out like, okay, well, we still have to deal with Gurix that maybe we can kind of angle our way out of here. If we get the black staff, <laughs> maybe that gives us the piece of, of oh, the puzzle that we can God. kind of work with. Um, you were like, well, we've just got to go and do this. We'll figure it out as we go, essentially. Like we have no no good choices here, but we'll have to figure it out. And I do want to point out with Raymond, it was, he was like a, it was like a thousand yard stare that he wouldn't that was catch it. on to anything. Um, so it seemed, I was kind of adding in that like, something had either kind of dulled his mind like i was kind of alluding to like a feeble mind type situation um but regardless it was uh it was too hard for you guys to really know and you it but it was enough that you were like i don't know right it was great because it was like some weird there maybe and val was trying to like in val said he was like maybe he's he's able to battle this. Maybe he's not truly there, just something going on. Anyways, we make this deal, just as Kyle said, we walk into this temple and we're like, well, I don't know what the fuck we're gonna do once we get this, but at least we know we have to get the staff anyways. So now starts our most intense ever dungeon crawl. Yeah. Um, like which a is proper constant. dungeon crawl. It lasts don't for- forget, We have please. the imp, Gurik sent the imp, the guide. That's yes. Right. We had, uh, Gurik had sent an, uh, along an imp, so that it was, it, that was a, one uh, a, a creature then to watch over and make sure that you're going to do what you're supposed to do two it was to try and help alleviate like how you get in contact with yeah. him when you do the thing because your timeline is so short that it was supposed to be like tell the imp the imp will immediately go to me tell gurix and it would be like time to stop you know what i mean like because there's no way you could travel back that's days mm -hmm. uh so that was was to be that ultimately we'll see how it plays out so we try and convince this little imp uh, just as we were about to descend into this crazy dungeon. Hey, can you watch our pet goat and baby <laughs> owlbear? And then we leave them and go into this dungeon. Um, memorable bits just to go through here. Honda, you kick in all the doors, just fucking storming through this dungeon. Yep. We meet a sphinx um, who had been like corrupted and we have to answer a very tough riddle while she's literally kicking the shit out of us. Um, she'd been corrupted by Carval's will and we're getting these clues of Carval is this evil lich insane wizard uh who is right now the wielder of the black staff and this is his entire layer that we're like traversing through um <laughs> get attacked by an iron golem how do you throw a jar of leeches at it i remember you throw the jar of leeches at that very like poor judgment as like it breaks nevir's concentration on like a blessed spell or something yeah. um we find the pieces of Stormcrag, which on stream is Brawley's um, Javelin, which is pretty cool. We didn't, it wasn't fully the Stormcrag you see on stream yet, but we found the like pieces of it. Yeah, it became like kind of a, a souped up Javelin of Lightning, essentially. We had a throwdown with like a vampire and I Val managed to use um, uh, animate object on like a really cool like what, Orcus? It's a statue uh, of Orcus. Statue of Orcus in a fight. That fight was really neat. We had another fight with like evil Flora. Uh, Kyle, there was so much shit here. And what was really scary was we had to stop and rest here. So mm -hmm. in one fight in particular, half our party is trying to do a short rest while Val and someone else were like trying to hold a door down. Um, we were just trying to let some people heal, some people get some magic back um, while we're trying to keep zombies out. Um, yeah, just so tough, just so, so much stuff. But it eventually comes to this point of getting to the lowest level, going through like a, a watery, cool gravity well thing, um, but ending up Kyle, why don't you describe this moment? Because it's when we meet this weird <laughs> eye creature. Um, and this is where it gets pretty, pretty spooky and interesting. Yeah, so yeah, this had been very long. You guys are traveling through basically like three tiers of this dungeon, and it gets progressively worse, and, and ultimately you get to get to this temple of orcas as you've come to learn that. Carval and the people who are, are here who are all undead in some capacity serve Orcus in some way. And Carval has served Orcus, but through the visions 
with from Orcus to Gord, uh, it had been kind of translated that Carval had kind of turned on Orcus, so to speak, and kind of broken mm. their pact. So there was this that was partially this rift. This is why Gord was sent on this quest in the first place to retrieve the Black Sap, because it's this powerful artifact. And Carval, who if you know serving Orcus, that's fine, you can hold this. But as soon as you break that pact, now fuck you, I want that back. And send in Gord and the wild cards. Um, but so you guys make your way to this uh, temple within the ziggurat and there's kind of this descending uh, thing of water, this well that flips halfway through and everything mm-hmm. flips upside down. And then the inverted ziggurat is upside down and, and continues into the earth. Uh, but for you guys is up uh, right side up. And as you come out of it, you find this kind of abandoned section of almost like an inverse layer but there's nobody in it. It's entirely empty. There are laboratories and there are, you know, areas that are just void of people. Um, And yet there's this kind of like something feels like it's watching you this whole time. There's nobody there. And you guys have been in this like abyssal temple uh, dungeon for so long. You're just so cagey. You're just so hackles up when I'm saying there's nothing there, but something's watching you. So like you guys are trying everything just to see what can, what can I do? And uh, we get to a point where you are able to meet this, for all intents and purposes, this alien, this, this blob eye creature that you lovingly dubbed Ian for, I don't even remember why, but you did. This was, I needed a name for him. I was like, I'm going to call you Ian. Um, and he was like, the, this figure was not combative with you. It was actually just like interested in you. But I was speaking so weird and so alien, yeah. very cryptic. That's a good word. Um, and spoke about the one who watches from the stars and how yeah you guys mentioned like carval and he's like yeah carval's like trying to learn and see the things that the one who watches has seen uh, and like they're getting close and like just like kind of all these little breadcrumbs you shit. guys just yeah. like what the fuck <laughs> we do start a bit of a fight here i think because this does start hondo's um beautiful like pun work while he's like in combat because you're just like got his eye on the prize (laughs) yeah (laughs) something in your eye (laughs) just like stabbing him you guys you you talked with ian and then he kind of led you through to where uh this portal this massive rift in this wall and it was very different than any portal you'd seen it was like a like a, a a broke like a someone had torn space uh, is, is how I described it. Uh, and this was the point that, yes, you did fall into combat with uh, Ian and Here, uh, yeah. there was another couple of creatures. You ultimately kill them. You got all the information you needed from them and you push through. Uh, except? And, except minus one. Minus one. Our pal Gord didn't make it through. Maybe out of game to say, but like this is a big fight and Gord just couldn't make it to this one. And I yeah, think Kyle, you were busy. Yeah. <laughs> and Kyle, you just made the cool call of like, this is so important. I think uh, and we'll just leave him out for this. And you, and you role played something with him after the fact. Um, but let's that, get to this. Sorry, yeah, that, no, that, that sounds like a little uh, hinky. Like we talked about it for a while, and he was like, "I'm totally okay, like to do this ahead of the fight. Like, go ahead and have the fight. We really wanted to. Like, the timing had to work out that we needed to have this happen, and he couldn't make it." Um, but you're also worried if one of us Jaegers him and he dies like that that's real shitty to have your character die exactly. like in there yeah i didn't want to do it either i didn't want to i was already running neavir and carball obviously and all the other shit i didn't want to have to run <laughs> gord because that is just it's just too much but what that meant was ultimately like you guys got really kind of downgraded losing mm-hmm. one of your your big hitters um but we i, I did I, I think it ultimately worked out and I'll, I'll go into what happened there but if you guys want to talk about the fight Okay, what do you remember from this fight when we like show up t- to Carval? Anything stand out for you? Uh, well, for one, just just quickly going back, this yeah. was where we met that spirit that had been trapped there for a long time. I seem to recall. Do you remember that? Like we met him in a in the bar or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, that was in like one of the earlier sections of the dungeon. There was like yeah. this like resting place, oh, and there was a I uh, like that guy, a ghostly figure <laughs> who 
it was it was a uh, it was kind of a, a trapped room. The room closed in, and it was like this old saloon. Uh, and basically, it was it was a, a shell game of having to take a random drink. One of them would kill you. One of them yep. would do something, and one of them would be your answer out of here. Uh, and Valentine stepped forward and did it. And ultimately, he he swigged back this one drink, and he just kind of faded from sight. And so did the guy, the the, the ghost guy. And everyone's like, I don't know if that worked or not. Is, is he dead? What happened? And it was just like a potion of etherealness. But I figured it out pretty quick. Like, I just had this. I was I was reading the clues. We were doing it, and I was just like, oh, okay, it's like a double bluff. It's this. So I'm taking it. Boom! I take the shot because I was just like, one of us has to do it, and I would rather it be me. I don't want someone else to die. Um, and Leah beside me thought i had fucked up and she was like no because uh, then and then you started to narrate it too because you're like val fades away and then it's just like oh no no and i remember being like i really thought i had it like pretty sure i got it and then you reveal it you can see your friends it's it's an etherealness thing but but you show back up but um, yeah hondo you did hit it off with the saloon guy that did yeah because you're not I, fucking I taking the, the terrifying thing of course you like this guy <laughs> <laughs> okay, now jump into that fight. What do you remember about the Carval fight? That was a really tense fight. Yeah. Um, I just, re- I remember, well, I died. Yeah. Um, I remember attacking the gate gem. I don't know. I think thought that was a oh, good yeah. idea at the time, but that was not a great idea. So we've talked about this before. So let me let me quickly set the stage. So what, when you guys go through that rift tear in, in, in the world, um, you feel like you're traveling through space, like through through the stars, and there's this kind of brief astral plane or travel feeling, and then you all arrive, but you don't all arrive together. And what I did was set up the map, it was kind of like a dome where this eye and like this flesh wall surrounded with eyes was kind of all surrounding this, this dome. And in the middle of the room was kind of a, a T, where's my camera, a cross section, and it was just like two T's of like platform. And in the center was this kind of half makeshift lab, like desk and like all this stuff. But in the very center of that was this pedestal that had this triangular prism of like platinum and obvious aura of magic. And it was clearly something very powerful. And then Carball is floating up and above. And he's in the middle of like, looking up at this massive eye overhead as you guys enter. Uh, and when you had crossed the threshold, we rolled randomly to see at which point you would start that in the right. fight. So you weren't all like, we can team up and work together. You guys were all over the map. And I think, you know, it was two, one, and two over there, something like that. So it was uh, one, I think a really fun way to kick off a fight where like the battlefield totally changed ahead of you, you had no idea. Um, and then Carval was kind of taken by a little bit by surprise uh, that there were people suddenly here uh, and you guys just like threw down. But as, as Kevin does point out, mid through the fight, you did try to attack the prism and try to figure out what it did. And on one hand, yeah, attacking is not a good idea, but <laughs> interacting with it, like trying to figure it out yeah, was yeah was a good idea if you had basically there was a check probably an arcana check or uh, i don't remember exactly what i had written at the time you could have essentially interacted and like turned it off and it would have closed the entire demi plane that you guys were in and shunted you back to the other room which would have totally changed the legendary actions and layer actions mm. carval would have been like thrown for a loop you guys maybe i don't know could have been like Restrewn about, but it would have essentially cut that connection off, uh, and it, w- it would have been fine, uh, and ultimately probably would have been better for you because, like, a big part of that fight was the levels. This platform, people get kept getting thrown off of it and falling into like into flesh, like you were still fine, but you had to fall 40, 60 feet or something like that, and then had to try and find your way back up into the fight. So like the aerial levels of the fight were so important that had you guys like interacted with that and got pulled out into the main room, you would have taken that off the field. I don't remember, like that. <laughs> no, no. I remember when we walked through this, Val, I think we thought, at least Val thought as a, as a player, um, we would have a moment on the other side of this 
to like get a plan, maybe like divide up potions or whatever, like figure out what our plan of attack was going to be. And then it was such a shock to be like, oh fuck, he's right there. Like, and we're literally separated. And now we're talking to him and now we're throwing down. Mm-hmm. And as you said, Carval, boom, flies. And we're so dumb, but we forget we have a flying carpet for this entire fight. And he's just above us hovering around and we're struggling. So our fighters, Brawly, Mary, they have to jump to attack him. So like part of their attacks are just that much weaker because they can't get their full hits. Um, like Kev said, the, the most traumatic moment, two of them are, Kev, I think you, I don't think it's, is it finger of death? You basically get killed by Carval. Yep. yep. And Nevir rushes to you, pops out her angel wings, rushes to you, revivifies you, brings you back, is trying to heal you up, and then Carval kills her. Just with the finger. Yeah, finger of death, sir. Alana dies, straight up dies, uh, and that triggers this crazy, cool cutscene, Kyle, that you should say, because it it leads into our next arc. Yeah, so uh, in, in the fight... Allie was getting lower and lower and she was just, she was getting kind of hammered in this fight. She was, couldn't get up on him. She couldn't get a whole lot of stuff going. So one, I felt bad, but I knew I had this kind of thing kind of building for a little while, ever since the, the, the vision with the seer in mm-hmm. the, in the Kel, there'd been a couple little hints and things that like Allie was connected to something a little bit bigger. There was, there was more going on with her and she, part of her character was always that she didn't know where she came from. She didn't know her Mm -hmm. family. And she was kind of just like still trying to figure that out. Um, And in this fight, Allie goes down and I kind of kicked out this very much like, like Pike's play to the Dawn Martyr, just like aura of light out of all around Alana. And she's kicked back up to her feet. She gets a couple hit points back. Um, And it was this kind of um, vision where she finds out that this angel had been kind of watching over her and that there's just like more to that. Like there's more to you here. Unfortunately, this was my my protection over you it, it's now gone you're now exposed like take care of yourself but we'll talk more later essentially you know in way more eloquent terms but it was a connection that like there's something big happening survive this fight and you'll find out more and then she gets back up into the fight mary gets like i think stunned and held for some of this fight she almost gets um straight up turned to stone by like a prismatic uh spray i think and what does happen is we do start to hit Carval. We do start to work together. But there's a bunch of counter spells here. I tried, I was so low as Val. I was trying to polymorph to get some health and he would just be like counter spell. Um, yeah. And we just kept going back and forth. And then it was either Mary or Brawley, I think was just able to leap up and get that final blow on him. I think, um, I think they cheerleader tossed. Yes, like, cheerleader tossed. Big yeah. cheerleader tossed to get the kill. Um, Mary says she tossed me, Brawley tossed her. And then we got that kill. Um, but unfortunately, in, in the with fight... With a nat 20, oh, I love hearing that. I love when, like, it works. The yeah. dice gods are on your side. That's always good. Um, yeah, part of part of what happened, though, in that fight, and also a brutal counterspell, uh, Hondo tried to heal Nevir at one point, uh, and I counterspelled the heal <laughs> to, like, ensure that she, she died. Would die, yeah. Uh, not, like, you know, not to, like, I want to make sure she died, but just, like, Carval... It's like get the it's healer evil. off the field. Yeah, like she's not getting back up. She's she's an angel. Like no, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, so that was uh, that was a big one. But that meant Neavir was officially dead, and you guys at the time had no way to revivify or raise dead nope. with her not there. So that was that was a big moment. So we end up carrying her, and uh, after we defeat Carval, he's got this vile crown on him. We we take the black stuff. It even hurts to be in the air, but I think we managed to put it in the bag of holding or something. But then we break into his vault. Um, well, that was using... that was where the black stuff was. He didn't have it at oh, the time. Okay. You got it from the vault, but still. Get into this vault using the vile crown. Um, here's our first hint at this word, tenebrious, which had been teased um, by Orcus and Gord. And Carval knew that word too. And that was like uh, the secret word to either unlock his door or his um, infernal puzzle box, right? It was both actually. Oh, great. Inside this puzzle box um, is uh, a rubbing that says he's been working with Mephistopheles. 
that's a whole thing. Um, but other things we got from that vault, just to go through quick, the Gate Gem Apparatus, uh, a Book of Vile Darkness, which in our stream, you'll see Gord start studying. Um, this Infernal Buzzle Box, like we mentioned, Whisper, uh, you might have heard of it before, a pretty cool dagger, and Mage's Bane, a badass sword uh, that has a dispel magic on it that Mary wields in our game. And it's like a plus three. It's like, it's a good sword. It's pretty dope. And then we take this knee of your body, our loot. Actually, I will say our, our timeline is running down. We have to get back for Gurex, but Val had made a check to know more about Liches, knows we have to destroy what is housing his soul or else he'll be able to come back. Kyle, we can't fucking find it. No, <laughs> can't well, find it, it. It was simultaneously like you guys can spend the time to look for it. And like, you know, you, you can make a check and it's gonna be, you, you made your check and in, and a lot of time that would allow you to find it and make your timeline to get out. You don't you don't make the check. You don't make a yeah. high enough roll. So you can still stay and find it. You can spend the time to look and find it, but you will miss your timeline. And you just couldn't do that because you had to go up. You had to get the boys. Your friends were on the, on the line. Souls and are on the line. There's so much. Souls are literally on the line. And the, the idea was like, you know, maybe we'll come back for it. But <laughs> that was just like, once you guys got out and you did ultimately make that decision to like, fuck it. Like we got the shit we came for. Fuck this yes. asshole. We're mm -hmm. out. And you had to make it back to, to meet this deadline. And you did. So we returned to the surface. Um, hey, Kev, don't you worry. Ted is still alive, as is Keith. <laughs> when we get there, that imp did a great job. Um, and now we're like, all right, hey, Imp, we're going to go talk to Moloch now, try and get some sort of like other like blackmail we can use. And we wander over um, to where that camp of um, infernal creatures was. Kyle, why don't you walk us through what happens next as we're like walking up here? A couple of key things change the game here. So you guys make your way to, uh, to, to Moloch to try and basically find the other end of this deal with Gurex, try and find something you can work with. And you present that, yes, you have the black staff, but essentially you're like, look, we have it, but we got a, we got a deal here. We got to actually like make, work out some terms. Um, and essentially uh, he agrees to um, kill Gurex off. So you don't have to worry about that deal in exchange for and and clear your souls in exchange for the black staff and the release of his captives and obviously it's a pretty sweet okay. deal for you guys <laughs> yeah i think legitimately you did you were just like great like you were, i was, was very reluctant to give up that black staff but i mean what, what were we supposed to do like beggars can't be choosers that and like it was it was a key point that you guys noted that like he was giving you a lot in exchange like this was a, yeah. a big thing but like how do you turn that down like uh -huh. you know if you fail if the deal with gurex fails three of your souls are lost to a pit fiend in the nine that's <laughs> not good uh who knows why, why were the our souls in the line again hondo well, how did that end? <laughs> <laughs> get that fun all worth it. It. <laughs> it's worth it yeah all worth it anyways uh you ultimately make the deal the imp is gone very quickly you are confirmed that Gurex is destroyed and your souls are back to you. You know, the deal is off with him. Uh, and the black staff is kind of presented. Moloch takes it. And then just in a very casual, like, thank you very much. I believe this is yours, kind of hands it off. Uh, and it just flies out of his hand to the outstretched hand of one Raymond Borales. What? That's but he's fun. our ally. He steps out of the shadows, and you see a Raymond Borales very different than the one that is still sitting in this kind of comatose-like position. He looks ragged. His clothes are tattered. He looks disheveled, uh, wild eyes, and he looks like not like you're used to seeing him. And there's just this kind of wicked evil grin, much I believe to uh, to Kevin's. <laughs> I was vindicated. I That's knew right. that piece of shit. <laughs> I think you said at least that much, if not more. I think you said I fucking knew it. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, and then the other Raymond was actually a simulacrum, so it just kind of melts into snow. He just kind of releases the spell. Yeah. Uh, and then because they're so lawful, they're basically like, thanks, deal's done, peace. 
enjoy your time here in the abyss and yeah. they bail on us uh we're stunned and what's interesting is uh right at this moment that kind of ends that game starts a new session and we decide to record this i have this recording of trying to put microphones around a table sounds like crap don't know if i'll ever release it's it horrible kev unless we raise fifty thousand dollars <laughs> we'll start a gofundme right here um <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, we have this game, so I remember it well because we still have Neo Veer's body. We we did level up here. Val got raised dead. Never done it before. And I try and do it on Neo Veer. And Kyle, you had not told us what was going to happen here. We, we thought maybe this would work. But then I, I roll very high as Valentine. I think Hondo, you had inspired me. I use that and I get above 20. I feel very confident in saying, and you run through how the spell works. But then... Kyle, you break our hearts. What do you say here? It's just a, um, you go through the ritual. It's an hour of this ritual and everyone is just beaten to shit in the time <laughs> that that's happening. Like you're checking on your other friends and stuff. And even up to the moment, I was pretty, I was probably about 75% sure that what I was going to do. 25% of me though, was just like, ah, but one, I love Nevir. Two, you guys need fucking Nevir. I know. Um, but ultimately like you guys are getting high enough level and it's time it's it's finally time to take the training wheels off like you guys gotta live for yourselves um and i really think honestly so as you go through the ritual you're given this vision of nevir kind of in what seems to be like a a heaven a mount celestia heaven the fields of elysium this this gorgeous sunny like hand through gladiator through the through the fields of wheat perfect kind of vision and nevir's there she's perfect um and you guys have a conversation just the two of you and she can see someone off in the distance who's like waving her on and it's it's just perfect for her and she just kind of says like I've done all I can for you. I'm where I'm supposed to be. I can't come back. She's found her peace. And I think yeah. honestly, she was happy with how it went down. She was able to protect you all the way to the end. She saved Hondo and with like her last kind of breath, like brought him back and brought you guys back and brought you to the end here, at least to this point. So that was it. At the table, I laughed because at the table, and Mary reminded me, Allie's crying her eyes out. I was sad. I'm the one who's only having this one on one combo with you, and I'm like, I get it. Nevir's like, I'll always be with you guys. Like, I'll always be watching over you. I just wanted to touch here, Hondo. I, I hope we talked about it in the other recaps. You, Hondo, and Nevir had this, like, you clearly had feelings for Nevir. She clearly was like, your end girl, your one. Asked me off most of the time. She was playfully, me the cold playfully. Shoulder, but she was playful. Uh, so yeah, like Hondo, you just want to touch on that, like your your relationship with Nevir and how Hondo felt in this. I think that's when it finally like. Cemented. I think if I won her, I don't, I don't won her over or that we finally clicked. But it was like in the spirit world type thing. It was like when I was dead and she was trying to bring mm. me back. And so I sort of couldn't understand why she wouldn't come back initially, like sort of frustrated, like why, you know, like there's still so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then this, I, I came back and told the rest, they were very pissed. I distinctly remember Mary being furious. Like, what do you mean? Value said it would work. Like, why didn't it work? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we just trek with her body through the rest of this jungle again, very scary, cross the sea once more um and end up back where we had originated from this like cliffy rocky edge we remember we have a carpet and that helps um but then we encounter that seer character who had originally had that conversation with brawley keys here inexplicably and kyle he reveals himself to be and it drops drops this this charade of this old crunch uh, you know hunched old man uh and reveals this like uh dwarven angel like it, it, you know an angel in the classic kind of silvered skin sense but like uh bearded and muscular and but tall taller than most especially for a dwarf but clearly angelic with these massive wings and um very much like the the figure that elena had seen in her vision and in the moment that she was brought back in the fight uh and he introduced himself as Arathal a servant of the Platinum Dragon, and that he was going to bring you to the Platinum Sanctuary. 
this place that had been long lost and long forgotten, though you had heard and had been a mm-hmm. quest of Neavir's to find the Platinum Sanctuary and to basically find the Dragon Guard, who were the, the champions of the Platinum Dragon, who was you know, champions to help in times like this, in times where the Revenant of Valor are trying to turn the material plane into the Nine Hells. The Dragon Guard should be the ones to, to be the champions here, but they seemingly been gone. So to try and resurrect them was her plan to start the Sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And that's where he takes you. I should mention here, Stormcrag is now what you saw. Like it had been um, remelted together. Like uh, as soon as this piece that we found in the, the vault of Carval, boom, it's together. And, and Brawley's getting more hints that, um, yeah, her lineage is, is very interesting and that she might have a destiny to play here. And then, like Kyle said, we end up in the Platinum Sanctuary. Um, we meet Us Kadar, uh, this dragonborn, really old, wise character who um, becomes a new mentor, not a new Raymond, Kevin, an actual good dude. Hondo, you do have like a nice little like uh, back and forth immediately with this guy though. Yeah. Um, but then uh, the final moment of our game before we start streaming, uh, 58 episodes, 58 sessions in, three years in, um, is a little funeral pyre for Neavir over the desert, Kel Desert. Her embers beautifully you described taking off into the sky. Um, and then Milkshakes, Mountains and Mayhem, our first episode, we had no idea what we were doing on camera. Our quality yeah. isn't that great as we're bopping around between Google Hangouts, Skype, <laughs> finally landing on oh, Zoom man. to figure it out. And now you're all like, up the stairs like in a line like heads pop down just watching Hondo. if you like the taste of this wine you will like the taste of my, my lips later on oh. <laughs> <laughs> make a persuasion check <laughs> yeah. let's see if you can seal this deal it was a it was an interesting journey from from the moment that we all were like yeah we should try and record this yeah we should definitely do this to actively doing it it really took the pandemic to kick us in the ass and say like we don't want to stop playing like yeah. this is especially like for me like this has been something that i'm so passionate about and something i'm so invested in i couldn't imagine the idea of of delaying for an unknown period of time and legitimately i thought that if we didn't continue like playing online or finding a way to play in person, obviously that didn't work out. Like the game would end and we mm-hmm. would never come back. Mm-hmm. Kev, how did you feel in those first moments when we started playing online? What, what was like the difference you noticed? Uh, you know, you sort of, I, you sort of feed, you read, you read people when you're playing at a table, right? And you sort mm-hmm. of feed off of their energy. So that was a bit different to get used to. But I mean, just being able to see everyone made it, made it more than worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we've said that in other videos before. Weekly, being able to meet up and ride the waves of uncertainty, unease, uh, but still have this camaraderie and escape to a fantastical place where we're heroes and the the magic and actions that we put into this world can have real world consequences um, was definitely a saving grace. Uh, we have condensed right now in these three recap videos, probably 300 hours worth of our game from our, our session one to session 58 before we start. Session 59 is our episode one. So if you have any questions about anything, you want us to expand on anything else, want us to um, zoom in on something that we talked about, please write them in the comments below. You can uh, add us on Twitter, Hexplorers D&D. We'd be happy to um, talk to anyone who has any sort of question. Kyle, where can they find our episodes, our current game, which as we're recording this is still streaming? Yeah, keep checking us out here, uh, Hexplorers. And uh, we've got plenty of other videos talking about some of the topics we've talked about in these recaps, uh, some some good 20 question videos with our with our cast and myself, um, and lots of little chats with uh, Scott and myself about the game and things from our game and elements of, of D&D in general. Uh, but yeah, keep lots of videos here for you to check out. Yeah, we start at level 12 uh, at that Milkshakes, Mountains, and Mayhem. I'll link our episode one there below. Kev, what um, can you tease them? Uh, What can they look forward to in this campaign that that shows on YouTube? Uh, What can they look forward to from Hondo and the rest of the wild cards? No spoilers, though. Just perhaps something vaguer than that. (laughs) Uh, More puns from Hondo, that's for sure. That's true. Um, Definitely more Raymond encounters. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And um, we do get a bit more explosive, I will say, with our weaponry and our attacks. I love it. Yeah. As we scale up, we get more powerful. We fall more and more in love with this campaign and our characters. Um, and we just want to thank you for watching these three recap videos. If you watched all of them, please watch our stream. And thank you so much for tuning in and watching this. Uh, for all of us here at Hexplorers, we love you and keep exploring. <laughs>